This are two uh, Aristocraft uh, Union Pacific E9s with the passenger pilot. And these have the datum precision coupler boxes, the machine CNC machine datum precision coupler boxes with KD901 couplers with <coughs> that come out of the KD907 kits, same coupler. And these boxes have the extra, the additional hole drilled right behind and tangent to the standard hole as datum precision makes these boxes with. So I've got two units here uh, with these projected boxes uh, mounted on the additional holes on each of the units here and it can be seen that there is plenty of space uh, and this is in tension between the pilots which which project outward more so than the freight pilots such as used on the Southern Pacific uh, E8s or E9s and if I put this in compression by pushing them together there still is uh, clearance there and of course I'm going to put it back in tension. The pins here uh, were custom bent uh, to to go around the uh, the pilot. Those are the the decoupling pins, or the pins meant to uh, actuate the uh, jaw of the coupler to utilize the KD magnet to uncouple the units <coughs> or cars coupled to a unit. And this is the KD magnet. It's an 844 that's in the track here. So I shall run these back and forth on this test track up in my loft. That includes two train lie R7 turnouts uh, configured in an S-Bend to kind of worst case test these things. So I'm going to back these units over the magnet as the first part of the test to see how they uncouple. And if I'm lucky, one unit will go a little faster than the other. If not, I'll have to... There we go. You can see that they do uncouple. Now I'll stop the units here. And couple them back up by shoving one to the other, nose to nose. And we'll run it over the S-Bend to see how the coupler performs. Right now it's on the straight backing up prior to the switch. Now it's over the switch. So I'll actuate the switch and it can be seen that there are two, there's a, there's a left and a right uh, switch here, and they're configured such to test for an S-Bend. And there's a six inch track section between the two. You should have a minimum, preferably a foot, <coughs> uh, between any switches that you want to configure like into a yard situation. You should have it at least the length of the longest locomotive. Uh, I would say between the frog points you should have at least the length of a locomotive, and this is probably tighter, a little bit tighter than normally would be expected. <clears throat> and the reason to do that is so that the overhangs won't be at too extreme of a position, so that you can have body mount couplers uh, work fairly well as these are. So we can see the action here of the coupler. I'll run it back in the right hand direction again with an overhead view.
Now a side view. Now I'm going to switch this turnout for the longer path here before it reaches an S bend and reverse it, reverse the two units, nose to nose, a couple nose to nose. You can see it's going to go off to the this section over here, the far section. Unfortunately, I don't have enough track extension to fully test it. <laughs> but during the development process, this brought out some issues to contend with, which have been remedied. <coughs> And there you have it.